Boston at the New England Aquarium looking at the famous 80 penguins. by the physics department. In 1977, Melissa was a graduate student at Stanford, studying for the summer at CERN in Geneva, where she met John Ellis. And this is CERN today. One evening, after work, Melissa and John and a few other friends went to a bar in Geneva to play darts. in particle physics. Here's the story. Somebody told a joke about penguins, and Melissa said to John, if you lose this next game, you have to put the word penguin in your next scientific paper. So John goes home, and he's a little happy, and he's working on a paper about the top quark. How is a penguin going to find its way into a paper about quarks? But what is a quark anyway? So, what are quarks? Quarks come in threes in stable particles, such as protons or neutrons, and can have a charge of minus one-third or plus two-thirds. But, in particle accelerators, we are able to create really heavy quarks, such as the top and bottom, or charm and strange. All particle interactions can be modeled by Feynman diagrams. Here is a Feynman diagram of an electron emitting a photon and continuing on its merry way. But, that day, John Ellis had been working on a very difficult Feynman diagram, one involving the very heavy bottom quark. Bottom quark, W boson, strange quark, top quark, gluon. So John Ellis looks at this, sees the circle, and thinks, gosh, can I turn this into a penguin? So here's the penguin. The W boson is the beak, the bottom and strange quarks are the wings, and the gluon turning into two quarks is the feet. And of course, the two quarks at the bottom, one is the antiparticle of the other. Penguin or Feynman diagram? Penguin diagrams are now a standard tool in physics. And that's the story. See up in the ceiling? See that big, big fish up there?